All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Beams and Columns. Sean and I are both back at our home bases and no longer traveling. So we've got our, our typical backgrounds and our typical screens and and uh, and and better audio and video, right, Sean? We, no no, oh, no yeah. more podcasts. Yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was a bit of fun when I was in <laughs> Australia. And we, we discovered the vagaries of Barossa Valley Internet, unfortunately for Jamie, I think. Um, the internet out there is a little bit sketchy sometimes. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm back in East Yorkshire where we currently have a heat wave, would you believe it? Um, nice, bit, nice. Bit, we, a bit toasty at the moment where we are. And I'm back in Arizona where we always have a heat wave. So <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice and hot. I, I, I'll throw out a reminder from my posts that I've been doing lately. Uh, you yeah. know, if you're, if you're out on the job sites, uh, water, rest and shade, it is, uh, it is just getting super hot out there. It seems like it's hot everywhere. And the humidity doesn't help. So uh, we, we, we've, we've got... actually, weirdly enough, just had our first set of forest fires up in Scotland. Yeah. So, you know, you see them in Australia, obviously places like California and so on. We, we've started to have a few here for the first time ever because everything is just so dry. I mean, well, we... I, I cut my grass a week ago and it's brown already. And it was like... And, you know, I, I had to struggle to cut it because it was so wet and vibrant and green. And and now it's brown again. So, yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm hoping, you know, the other thing we've kind of been, uh, I've kind of been exploring on my end and and, uh, and and looking at in some posts and talking to some consultants about our, our, uh, some of the um, fire uh, alert systems or fire alarm systems that can be set up temporarily during construction. Um, so I don't know, you know, I, I know out here, you know, we do end up with, uh, with fires on construction sites. And, and in the past, you know, we always joke that if there was a fire on a construction site, it was most likely the plumber, right? They're the ones with the torches. <laughs> yeah. and brazen. We, so we always blamed it on the plumber, but, um, you know, we've had, we've had several fires on construction sites out here just in the last several years, um, where, the, the fire department has actually come out and said they, they believe that some of the, uh, used roofing materials, the maybe an open container, maybe a, a rag of some of the adhesive. Just it just got so hot up there, it just combined. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, we're 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 uh, got several clients that we've kind of encouraged to, um, you know, not store things on the roof, and and you know, all roofing materials come down at the end of the day to to prevent some of these uh, these construction fires because they're just they're just horrendous when they happen. There's no fire suppression system in service yet. So they, yeah. they just devastate the building. Yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, well, looking at the comments, we're getting lots of people kicking in. Um, I noticed there's a very good Autodesk University friend of mine there. Hey, SE, so I hope you're doing well. Um, lots of other people kicking in as well. So if you do want to jump into the comments, say hi, say where you're from. It's always nice to see how far our reach goes for our global domination, etc. Um, I've yeah. got Lagos in Nigeria there as well. UAE is another one as well. So keep popping them up. India. So they're kicking in at the moment, which is great. So yeah. nice, nice to see everybody's jumping in. Um, but yeah, we, we've got a really good guest today as well. Um, also from England, which is nice. <laughs> that's, um, that's, that's right. He, he's got some very cool stuff show us which i've been intrigued by watching his posts on linkedin so if you want to bring james in jim that'd be great yeah so this is our our guest this month is uh is james bowles bowles from uh freeform correct um uh, yeah. and and it, you know i've actually i've reshared uh several of james's uh posts on 4d bim and uh, I think you you were actually nice enough to give me one of your little video flyovers that we uh, probably put a little clip in one of the LinkedIn Learning courses, even where I'm talking about you know kind of the the, the near future of construction and some of the things that that we can do. But uh, yeah, I started following James on LinkedIn just after seeing some of your your 4D BIM posts, and um, you know, of course I always get questions about what is uh, what is 4D, you know, what is 3D, 4D, 5D. What, what does all that mean? And you know, we we talk about that uh, from time to time as well. But um, James, I we we really appreciate you joining us. And uh, yeah, just take a take a minute or two to introduce yourself and 
tell us what your background is and and what what you're doing now. Uh, yeah, I, I will do. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Sean, same as you. I'm I'm really hot just in this room here. <laughs> so you yeah, it's toasty see, today. There's a lot of glass behind me. Uh, I, I'm uh, a little bit south of Sean, so I'm I'm near London. And yeah, it's a heat wave. It feels hot, and I kind of wore a jumper to this. So if I <laughs> if I turn camera off halfway through, it's like it's just because I'm gonna can I go put a t-shirt on but yeah it's good to be here thanks very much um uh yeah and even just starting with those questions 3d 4d and 5d that's that's kind of a chronology of my career so I started at a general contractor um for 10 years building 3d well uh in structural design same as you Sean I came through the design side uh went through site management and then my hobby which was the saturday mornings was building 3d models so i was building 3d coordination models like you know facade brackets on uh, slabs before we go out and start fixing those facade brackets and um, access routes around the site and silos for the, the mortar and and those kind of things so i started in 3d at a contractor and then that quickly turned into 4d because we were uh, scheduling things, we were planning. And then recently we've been um, adding cost and adding safety to some of these models to kind of really um, use them for more purpose than, than they being used for. So yeah, is, if that's a good starter, Jim, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna drink as well, water here as well. Sure, you drink as well. Like, I'll, I'll take your advice. Have yeah, the same. yeah. Right. and I'm on, I'm on coffee. I'm, I'm the other side of the world, so I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm still on coffee for the morning. <laughs> yeah, good morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, something, some, something that we were talking about before we came, you know, live and so on was, um, it was a comment that James made many moons ago on LinkedIn that made me smile. Um, it was, we need to work with a Minecraft kind of mindset rather than an AutoCAD kind of mindset. I've been an AutoCAD person for, well, 34 years this year. Um, but basically, it just kind of made, made me laugh out loud because it's so true. Because we now have the technology and the processing power to work with that Minecraft mindset where we literally, we either pick up a porter cabin or a truck and put it on the site plan. You don't have to change four or five drawings to get to that point anymore. And the, the, the way, I mean, something that I'm very interested in is reality capture, photogrammetry, all that kind of stuff, flying the drones around and things. I've got a few little projects on the go with that at the moment. And if you look at, I mean, thanks, Jim. That's great as well, showing what James does. That, that's there's, there's, exactly, yeah, there's the... that's, that, that's that Minecraft mindset. I mean, you're just moving things around and placing them exactly where you want them to go. Now, to do that on an AutoCAD drawing is going to take hours, possibly days, to get all that updated. But now we've got this ability to generate the 3D model, move around the 3D model, and occupy the 3D model with different phases of the construction of a project. So as you can see there with James's stuff, you can bring the JCB in. You can bring the truck in with the steel work on it. But then also, once they've done their job, you can move them off-site and go to the next phase of that particular construction project as well. And it, I've been loving watching James's videos pop up on LinkedIn because visually they're just really entertaining as well because it, it, it's, like, it's like this is exactly what I was thinking about 25 years ago when I was working on a petrochemical site thinking, how are we going to move all that steelwork and that vessel into that space over there? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's the way technology has moved. And we had a previous guest on, which Jim will verify. Um, he's a very good friend of mine, ex-Autodesker, Pete Kelsey. And he, he is the drone guy. He, what, what he doesn't know about drones ain't worth knowing. And he, he was also talking about how we now have this ability to take real world data and develop, in essence, a digital world, a digital twin of that information. And it, it's starting, as, as I said to James um, before we started, it's just beginning to start to pay dividends now. We're starting to get to that point where we're moving towards a world where drawings are important. They always will be. You, you're going to have to work from drawings to get the design intent communicated to the right people. But you also want to 
make sure that you visualize it and kind of look at it in a in a digital real world and that's where james comes in with this 4d modeling and it, for me james it's just I, I almost see it as fun dare i say it it's it's not really work <laughs> yeah so, so I, i'm taking notes in this conversation as well sean and you've kind of hit a Hit at least eight keywords there that we could we could open up for the audience. This is a learning piece, right? So, yeah, um, I'll start. I'll, I'll start with where that post came from. So that so I'm obviously in my office at home. Most of us do that now. Uh, those of us who are technicians, we do that, right? So we have on my screens here. I've got excavators and tower cranes, and I have two uh, two sons, and they walk past the screen, and their comments to me is like yeah dad you're playing games again you're kind of this looks like minecraft it feels like what we do when we have our mates over and we're we're kind of you know they're testing ideas and we can use we can use the words we use in industry right they collaborate in yeah. a virtual environment and they'll put a headset on and they'll connect like we are here and it's it's kind of it's interesting and sure in our conversation beforehand about gamification and unreal engine and those those players who are coming into our industry um, for people like us, we want it to happen faster, but it's happening. And it's kind of, it's, it's really interesting to see because when, and if, if I'm going to, if we're going to do the what is 4D piece, um, it, it, if it's done well, if it's done, if it's done in the way it should be done at the right stage of a project, it feels like a game play. It feels like a construction team. It won't just be the planner or the project manager or the superintendent, superintendent who's who's making decisions and then trying to articulate them. It's a team process. And so you have the engineer, sometimes the owner will come in the room and, and kind of and say, hey, pause, rewind. Where's that temporary works? Where's that ramp going? Because we've got, a, you know, we've got a, a bus lane there or we've got a neighboring scaffold or something. And it goes from, it's still professional, right? We're still professional teams, but it gets like those environments, if they're done well, it's like a game, you're playing something, you're kind of playing and you're testing ideas and you're doing it virtually. And then you go to the job site. You, I'm not sure of the audience here, so I'm, I'm going to say scheduled and job site. But you go to the sites and it's things run better. That's that's it. That's the value. And it's it's taken some of us who've been doing this for 10, 15, 20 years to get to that point of really understanding what the value is. And it's not the animations that I'm posting, Jim, on LinkedIn, it's not that stuff, it's not the end bit, it's the middle bit. It's the, the bit where teams get to work together. And it's, yeah, it's good. The, la the last 10 years, the, the adoption's happened. I think we've got it, like construction teams, general contractors, we've got it. We're, we're kind of, it's, it's being adopted. We're on the adoption curve. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and I think, I think you're right. I, I agree with you. We're on the adoption curve. Um, and, and, and for me, it's, it's exciting. You know, I think, on the design side of, of the process, the designers have been using 3D and building information models really for quite some time. Not all of them, but, but a lot of them really have been designing using 3D and, and designing in BIM for a while. Um, and but, but, but it's been very slow, I feel like, to permeate into the construction side of things. And so, you know, it's exciting to me to see you know, some of this site planning or building logistics planning, where now we're getting, you know, we're getting some real full use out of the model. It's not just for design anymore. It's not just to show the owner uh, what their structure is going to look like and what their facility is going to look like. It's not, you know, it's it's those things and then pre-cons using it. But, but now we're, you know, now we're really getting to use it. You know, we're having some of the field ops team come in and, and really be able to leverage that model to um, plan things in advance and, and work out site logistics or, or like you said, safety, which is, you know, which is great. Okay. If we sequence the, the, the construction operations this way, what, you know, what happens, what are we exposed to? Um, you know, what are we missing? Sometimes it's a lot easier to see those things visually in three dimensions than it is, you know, trying to cloud a section on a two dimensional drawing sometimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, but what is give it? An, give you an idea there, Jim. Just you were talking yeah. about how long this has taken to permeate in. Revit was adopted, well, acquired by Autodesk in 2002. Yeah, well, yeah. There, here's here, here's a comment. I I've been using 3D models since 2006. Yeah. So I, I've <laughs> dabbled with Revit since 2002. Revit is great. 
you know, from a, from an architect's mechanical, structural, and so on. But as you quite rightly said, there's no way of actually playing around with that model. It's more you're kind of going to the, the stakeholder and kind of saying, here's what it's going to look like. And that's great, you know. And, okay, Revit's got some degree of phasing capability within it where you can show different phases of the model at different times. But there's no way, like you've just seen on the videos that James pops up on LinkedIn, where you can actually jump in and phase a particular part of the build. And what, what James does is he's gone kind of that next level along where you could, like, like you quite rightly said, James, it, it's collaboration, but it's it's almost the gamification of collaboration. You know, we, we've all seen the, the the games, you know, I mean, I was sitting there having breakfast this morning and the new Zelda game was being advertised on the Nintendo Switch, all that kind of stuff. But that's what we're doing. We, we are literally doing this. It's the same workflow. You're still moving stuff around on a screen, but you're doing it in a way where it, it's it's a real site and it's a real world environment. You're not running around trying to find the stolen ring in the Zelda game. You, what you're trying to do here is work out how do I get all of this, you know, materials onto the site? How do I get the machinery onto the site? How do I move it around safely so that we have, you know, boundaries around it so that it, it's safe? And I mean, we were talking about, you know, the heat and how fires can start and all that kind of stuff. And it, it's, it's really moved along. Uh, it's, I think what's happened is we've we've kind of had this slow gradual uptake from the 2D drawing from when you know I first started using AutoCAD way back when when I was 18 kind of idea and we, we've seen everything gradually kind of go up and then all of a sudden there was this moment in time where the curve decided to go like that and that's kind of what's happened and and I and I can't see that steep curve stopping just yet we're not going to plateau just yet because there's so much going on at the moment, you know, with the technology, with the processing power. I mean, if you, if you watch people like AMD and NVIDIA, they're just bringing out more and more capable graphics processing units, graphics cards all the time. Mm. And so, some of the processing power, some of these machines, I mean, for example, I mean, Jim knows about this. I've got a little photogrammetry project going on with my local church where I've done some drone footage and I'm converting it to a model. And the processing power of my machine sitting next to me here, my ops machine, I, I took in like 200 photographs and converted it into a model. And it took probably about 20 minutes to do it in the cloud. Now, if I'd have done that 10 years ago, it would have taken probably about 20 hours over a weekend to process that stuff. Mm -hmm. So the, the base engines that we're using are so much faster which is allowing us now to to do this stuff almost as second nature. And what James is doing is is increasing that curve. And like like we said, that the adoption is beginning to happen. People are beginning to realize that this stuff's really important. Yeah. Well, and, and so yeah, I, I, yeah, I love it, Sean. We're, we're, and so that that kind of brings us. That's great because that brings us from like two D to three D. So James, when we talk about 4D BIM, um, that fourth dimension is time, right? Um, yeah. We're just, we're, we're adding, we're adding the schedule. Um, but I'd, I'd love to kind of get your input on like, you know, how, how is that done or how hard is that? Or, um, you know, what do we have to watch out for when we do that? Tell, tell us about that process a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's a good question, Jim. Before, before we do that, can we, should we do a really quick bit on definitions? And yes. the naming yes. of this because, because, it's it's right because um, I guess some listeners wouldn't know it. the the 4D bit and where people say 5D, 6D, 7D. Like a lot of us who actually do this don't um, we don't like those terms, right? We we kind of see it as collaborative planning or model based scheduling, and the even and not to correct you here, Jim, but it's like it, we're not adding time to 3D. We're kind of using everything we've got. So Sean, the 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 capture of the reality from the site. The, some of the intelligence that's already kind of put, been put to paper, like the temporary work, some of the design that's been done, uh, the design models themselves, Revit files are getting classified in a more more mature ways now. So on these projects, the contractors gathering up as much as possible and then getting the team to, to plan. So 
kind of saying that and like like we say 3d um, is actually design coordination and performance increase and all the things that we do um, sometimes it's not helpful for and when we say 5d that's cost right and six is safety or sustainability and seven is something it kind of you can you can kind of lose the team sometimes and it becomes a technical thing yeah sure and i kind of made a note as you were talking there as well there's a point here that uh to increase adoption um is to exactly as you say about the the tools that we've got now not not just the tools but the hardware um that disappears you want that to disappear you don't you don't even want a technician in the room you so going back to the minecraft thing we we're waiting for unreal engine to or someone to build uh, a solution on top of unreal engine for all of us but um you don't want the technology in the room you just want it like we're doing a tag gram review we've got 16 tag grains we need to resolve this like where, where where are they sitting and that's happened in the last couple of years uh, for a lot of us who've been doing a lot of this and the technology's disappeared and now we're planning so and, and a lot of people and I, a lot of people keep telling me that this is just planning right this is planning this is we've been doing this in our heads since the pyramids since we've been building stuff we have a we have a plan we, we're going to go and build this thing and we communicate that like you know but by with a stick in sand and we're kind of describing how we're going to go about it this is the same thing it's an evolution it's a way of planning that means more people can get involved sorry jim i've forgotten the question but i just I, I, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no no that's that's perfect I, no i i think no that's great to to sort of you know set the foundation and and uh uh get everybody on the same page as, as far as some some definitions and, and no that, that's i appreciate that um but the question was just like how do you get you know i'm looking let's, let's see if i can uh, add this you, you know if i if i click on play here um you know we're walking through the site and you know not not only are are you and this is one of your posts obviously um you know making notations and kind of planning as you go, but um, you know, I'm seeing the the schedule up there in the in the corner, um, and and as this video plays, uh, we're we're seeing the site progress as well. And so, so my question is really, you know, if I've got this this 3D building information model, um, you, you know, it's it's kind of when I when I view it, it's it's a you know it's a static model. I can I can fly around. I can move it. I can you know zoom in. I can click on elements, and that's great. But you know, really, you're kind of taking that a step further and showing you know how that how that structure or site or facility is going to progress over time. So you know, I can't just I can't just plan out my site logistics for what the site looks like today, right? I need to know what the site's gonna look like in six months because that might change my logistics. How do you get all that scheduling information in there? You know, how do you, I guess that's my question in general is, is, is how difficult is, is is some of the stuff that you're showing us? Yeah, the, and, and some of the pitfalls, yeah, the, the process. Yeah. That's what, yeah, it's a good question, uh, Jim, thank you. Okay, so um, it depends on the project, it depends on the scale of the project and how, uh, and the time. Like the at what stage of the project you're at, of course. Um, let's take the ideal project. Let's take the the best case scenario. Mm -hmm. So you you've got an owner who has um, some they 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 have some land. We need land to build stuff. They have an investment and they have an outcome. They have a brief, and whether that's um, a high rise or an airport or a railway, it's the same kind of thing. You need to um, design it and then you procure it and then you go to market and you figure out how to build it. We know that and that's materials and labor and transport and interfaces and all the things that we have on projects so um this kind of planning this this method of planning the the, the team planning the collaborative planning where anyone can access anyone can anyone can make a program anyone, anyone can make a schedule from this let's say so the ideal is an owner appoints a project manager and appoints the design team that, that's the that's the usual one we don't appoint the contractor first but as as that design team starts preparing and working through the brief um, and working right they we and we're, we're doing this on some projects on the bigger ones they will do constructability reviews and sense checks and logistical planning because there is usually a site and that site's fixed 
So it's like, okay, well, like for building urban projects or like an alignment of a big rail project, there's always, there's always some site conditions. So Sean, your point about like drones and reality captures getting better, that comes it's that information comes in and as the design team are, may, maybe it's just the massing, like does it make sense to phase the, the project from this direction to that direction? And as you go through, come by, through concept design into detail design, does it make sense that we're going to unitize the facade? Does the fixing on the um, on the edge of the slab does that make sense? So we're going to have to change that. And you, as you design, you're running constructability reviews. So you're kind of that master builder from 300 years ago, right? You're kind of designing and figuring out how to build it at the same time. So that's sometimes Revit files. It's a bit of reality capture. It's you. You can do it in 2D. You can mark have someone mark up a PDF and then a technician somewhere will bring that into the 4D. So you start calling it the 4D model, the process is planning, and then as you go to market um, through pre-construction and your general contractors and subcontractors are supplying information back, the, the best case is you're always, you're continuing that thread and you're continuing to assess the practicality and the constructability of this thing you're going to build and you're doing it in a model so there's there's less room for error you, you're 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 designing for safety um you're constructing for safety and you're getting everything set up to be lean and safe and the best it can be and then when you get a site you're tracking so you've got like drone capture or the helmet cameras or if you get really advanced you've got some kind of way like lidar survey your boston dynamics dogs walking around and you're getting immediate feedback and it's like well okay we haven't we haven't put the um, the floor boxes in so we really shouldn't screed okay but I'm, get, I'm getting feedback and i can do that remotely so you go from big stuff to detail and um, model-based planning and scheduling really help it's uh, it's it's like you're kind of flying with jeep like you're flying the radar like you can kind of use those kind of terms you anyone on the team can input and anyone on the team can get insight. That's not really the technical answer, but that's the kind of behaviors piece. Yeah. So does that help? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and talking of information, there's a really good question that's just popped up in the comments. Um, this is something that I wanted to ask James anyway. Can you integrate sensor technology, such as RFIDs and so on, so that they're giving you information for, in essence, inverted commas, your 4D model? Uh, yes, yeah. So, so I guess there's, there's, we could say there's two types of sensors. There's the sensors you drop in as you're pouring concrete, and it's giving you the the, the curing time. And hey, we've reached strength that uh, like 18 hours. Like, well, okay, that means we can do something else. And then there's dynamic sensors, which is machinery, plant, labor, even like possibly. Like where, where's the hot spots? What well, can we do something about that? Um, let, for lessons learned. That, we're working with some companies on that at the moment. So, you, 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 Sean, you're kind of imagining, or the, 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 the question here is imagining you've got 64 machines on site, you've got hoists running up and down, how efficient are they? Well, like, okay, maybe, maybe those machines, certainly the excavators and machinery, um, that would be nice to see in the model. It would be nice to see what we're doing next week. It would be nice to see like, what we're doing tomorrow. And should we really like park these up and have them idle there because we're about to bring a big prop in. That that kind of immediate feedback for everyone, it's happening. It's probably yeah. We're not we're not we're not doing that fully on any project, but yeah, it's, there's there's great value there, and that's that's kind of your your lean um, shift planning and things. You get right down into the detail. Yeah, it's possible. It's all it's all possible, right? That's that's usually the answer from us technicians. Is like, yeah, it's possible. Sean, you must do the same thing. Oh yeah, been there. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. When do you want it? Yesterday. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, and the the sensor <laughs> question is is a good. I, I I do like the question because I do feel like um, James. I I agree with you. I, I absolutely think it's possible. I just, and I hear people talk about it. I just haven't really seen it yet. Now uh, the sensors you're talking about, as far as the, the concrete maturity and the, that's, that's awesome. And, 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 you know, those are, those are in full use and, and, uh, and that is helpful because like you said, we, well, now I don't have to just arbitrarily wait, you know, three days. Um, if my concrete's up to strength in 18 hours, I can, you know, tension tendons pull forms and, and move so that's great but the 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 sensors that locate people and machinery you know in real time on jobs i just haven't uh i, I think it shows promise i just haven't seen it really uh, uh come to fruition yet 
Yeah, I saw a good one. Um, it was, I think I might have even seen it on LinkedIn. Um, it was all about QR codes. At, we, we talked about it, Jim, I, I think a little uh -huh. while back, mm -hmm. with QR codes actually on the site and on the scaffolding and everywhere else, where yeah. anybody can just, as long as they've got the right application or whatever on their phone or their iPad, they can just scan that QR code and it'll bring up the necessary drawings, documents, models, on their viewer on their device so that they can mm -hmm. see what it should look like so if they're out there measuring for example and snagging they can just hold a tape or a digital tape against it and go well it's that long okay there's the qr code let's go and check the drawing and make sure it's right and it's it's one of those things where you're getting it right first time and avoiding all the rework and the variation orders and everything else and uh, i mean yeah I, I remember being on site when i was working in petrocam i lost count of the amount of variation orders I had to sign off over time, um, you know, and, th and they were, but they were silly variation orders. Like somebody had ordered the wrong size washer or something like that, you know, back in the day when we were bolting down, you know, steel columns onto concrete plinths, all that kind of stuff, you know, and somebody would go, oh, that, that's, you know, that's the wrong bolt or the wrong nut or the wrong washer. And you'd have to do a variation order for that. And then you'd have to wait two days for the new stuff to arrive. And, Ideally, what I'd like to see, and I know we're talking about going right down into the weeds here, but that's where I can see the technology going based on the conversation we had with Amy Marks, for example, Jim, where, you know, we're, we're, we're at this point where fabrication is almost automatic once, you, once you're looking at the design. So instead of an architect or an engineer looking at a catalog and working out what they want, they don't need to do that. They just go, oh, I need to put a window in there. And, and the application or whatever they're using just goes, oh, well, this window will fit. You need this one from this manufacturer. And that's it. And would you like to place the order, tick the box, and off it goes. You know, and then it's ordered. And, you know, it's going to be on site within whatever time. And that that's that's where I'm seeing this this graph going up and up and up. There's more and more level of detail that we can get to because as james quite rightly said the hardware and the technicality isn't in the room anymore what we're doing is we're actually asking the real questions we're not saying oh can our autocad draft to kick out this drawing in two days for the client we don't need to worry about that anymore it's more can i move that jcb and park it over there so that i know it's safe when i'm bringing this steel work in from this entrance here mm. it's it's moving along at pace and you know i'm of an age where i just look at it sometimes and think in 10 years time am i going to be keeping up with this <laughs> can i can i this, that's brilliant sean can i just add something to it as well um on the point of convergence so a lot of we we all see a lot of startups doing a lot of things and we see the big houses doing other things right and um with computer vision um with you know nerf so Yes, uh, I've heard of just, that. Yeah. yeah, just grabbing your phone and walking around the job site, right? Recording uh, with uh, QR coding, uh, registries, with anything like that. Something's happening off site. So you've got like you've, uh, I posted one this morning on bathroom pods. So imagining, you know, you, you, you're getting visibility of what's happening off site assemblies that impact critical path, right? There's only, You've got that, you've got machines now that are recording, they're GPSing, and they've got XYZ that's going into a model. You are possibly in the next few years, we're gonna have a few uh, Apple Vision Pro or glasses, some kind of version of seeing. So like there's an augmented and there's reality capture. And so you, what we, I mean, that I've listed like 10 things there that will converge and overlay and they'll disappear as well. Yeah, as in you won't need us as technicians or anyone it kind of disappears and sites and um, the delivery of projects becomes a virtual i'm not going to say twin but, but uh, there's a virtual version and it's just ahead of what's happening so you're kind of having some foresight of what's happening and uh, okay the the uh the, the the steel assemblies came in and they actually came in the wrong order as they usually do right we've got column 16.4 and really we need to put like sit that over there before we put column 16.3 in and we're gonna have to lift and place and then you know all the projects die from the small stuff and the, the the death by a thousand pains is what we all face in construction it's complex it's a, it's a dynamic complex world uh, activity some of the convergence of these tools 
you kind of feel like we're going to get a lot better like that and i'm going to be biased here but a lot of it can feed into 4d and that can be a platform for do and so so that's that's kind of what we're looking at for the next five years is which of these tools uh which of these solutions and which of these pieces of hardware fit in to that world to add more value and, and sure this is the adoption curve because the value becomes much easier to describe you're not just yeah yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, you're now getting feedback. You're getting real feedback from these projects. This is an interesting time for construction, I think. For I mean, you mentioned the Apple Vision headset that was recently released, um, yeah. which everybody would need a small mortgage to purchase, I hasten to add, because they're not cheap. Um, however, what I liked about that, and I, I'm a bit of an Apple fan anyway. I've got the iPhone, got the iPad, got the MacBook, etc. And one of the things I like about Apple is... They always like to do. What was that? Was that an Android phone? Uh, yeah, it's a real phone. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. There's always a bit of banter between me and Jim when it comes to Apple and Android. Um, but yeah, the, what I liked about the Apple Vision headset was that it was a headset. It wasn't like, for example, the Oculus, where it's it's great for gaming and it's great for flying drones and all this kind of stuff. But what I liked about the Apple one was Apple sat there and just thought about the practical application of it, the, what I call the day-to-day -day type stuff. So you, you're sitting there with the Apple Vision Pro on, and, oh, look, now I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. I can go and check my schedule. I can look at Word or whatever. And I thought to myself, well, if we can, like you say, move along a little bit further in time, and I don't know whether it will be Apple who does it or Oculus or whoever, but if we start getting to that point where we're in essence got the headset on and we're looking at something on site and it's basically regenerating what you're developing in 4D on that headset, like you say, you, you've taken the technology out of the equation again because yeah. the headset is on, but it's it's not a headset. It's just, oh, I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. There's 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 no oh I need this headset to do this I know that I need to just put that headset on and perform a task. Well, and, and that's that's where I want to see it go. Go ahead, James. That's, that, so that's already happening. Um, yeah. And for for anyone in the audience uh, and Jim, I don't, yeah, well, I'd say really quickly. Uh, hopefully, we'd be working with them quite soon. We share a lot of clients. Uh, X Y Z Reality. Okay. Uh, there are alternatives, I think, but they're they're kind of super exciting. Uh, like really interesting, and that, that's exactly what you're saying, Sean. Is an augmented. That's it. That's the that's the site. And uh, I'm not gonna. I, I might misquote them here, but it's you know it's within millimeters. So it's a tolerance and rework thing. But for us who kind of plan and look at the next shift and look at two weeks ahead and even six months ahead, like I'm gonna walk and get a feel for what's happening. Um, yeah, just putting 4D in there. Wow, that's a, that's an easy one. So this is part of that convergence thing that we're going to see in construction yeah. technologies. That's another thing. It just goes in the goes in the box, goes in the kit of parts, and yeah, they're going to get cheaper, and us us as technicians are going to get cheaper. It becomes easier, and the technology disappears. So well, that's that's so that's really interesting, James, because I had not really considered the 4D in augmented reality. Um, so now I got now now I got all kinds of you know gears and and wheels spinning in my head because I, so the one I've been watching is um, Argyle uh, Merritt Thatcher um, and and Argyle has has been working with that uh, that augmented reality so not virtual reality where you have got the the Oculus headset on like you know like Sean mentioned but the the virtual or the augmented reality where um, Kind of, they kind of started out using the Hololens from from Microsoft, which I got to play with a lot and thought was really cool. But you know, kind of had some hardware issues where you know when I looked at the site and and I'm looking you know at the site through the augmented reality visor and projecting the model, I'm having a little bit of model drift and and you know it's 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 not working quite right. And Argyle recently shifted to I think the Magic Leap. Um, you know, which looks to me real similar to the uh, the new Apple product, um, but yeah, you're you're able to just and and that's that's that seems to have solved a lot of the model drift, um, and and you know, so I can put those on and go out to the job site, and I can, you know, say look up at the steel structure that's framed and look at how my cable trays go in and my HVAC goes in, but to add sort of the the time element into that. James and see like okay now I now I'm not just looking at 
what's there or what's supposed to be there ultimately. But now I'm looking at, okay, according to what we have planned now, this is how all this is going to step through and go together. Yep. That's, that's pretty cool. So, let, so if it's okay, let's do a few minutes on this because there's a few yes. other things there. So what that starts allowing you to do is not just for an individual on the project to see something, but you, you, can, you can bring in remote experts. So you can bring in the rest of the project team just for 10 minutes. Hey, we need to have a look at this. Nice. And with thinking about the Unreal Engine tools, if you can go and grab from a registry, from a library, uh, that excavator, I want, I want a, I'm a, I'm a 40 ton excavator, and and we're, we're playing around with this, we're pretty close, just to go and grab it, and with this, with a headset on, and you place it, and okay, that doesn't feel right, and, and you can, I, I don't know if, it, if it's okay, uh, have a, are we okay to search for some, there's a, there's a, there's a great video, um, B1M, from about five years ago, I can, I'll type it in after I've stopped talking, um, that is VR. So although okay. I mean, they're, 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 you've got mixed reality, you've got um, augmented reality, which is what we're talking about here, but there is, there is, there's a lot of value in VR as well. Yeah. So that now, now it's, it, it's usually single player, but you can get multiplayer. And it's an experience of if you're 18 months out from the project, you're not going to be able to walk around and overlay something and check that slab out. But um, to do it in VR, so you take the model, and for us, it, we, we did this five, six years ago. There's a good video, I'll, I'll, I'll try and share it. And the um, logistics manager of a 62 floor high rise center of London got to go in there and sit in the tower crane and check sight lines. Now, you're not going to do that with an augmented reality on a site, because right. you can't go 300 meters above London. Yeah. So um, we built that environment for him and for the team, and it was, yeah, it's a okay. case. It nice. didn't take off in the way we thought, but that's going to come back in because if if Unreal come in here and the the headset is like, yeah, Sean, it's like three and a half thousand, isn't it, for the vision? But yeah, it's not cheap. We, we're getting cheaper headsets, so imagining cheaper headsets and you can just go and go in eighteen months from now. Um, yeah, VR, AR, interesting. Again, convergence. The, these things yeah. come together. Yeah, th yeah, there's an interesting comment there from. Do you, you do you remember Adam Crespi, Jim, Unity guy? We bumped into him at AU a, few, a little while back. Okay. Uh, Adam is, is is switched on. There's no doubt about it. And he's got that comment there about fixing the model drift, which is quite interesting. If you go to the one above that, though, where he's talking about varying the synthetic model, that just just read that one just a little bit further above. It's, that's the one. And if you take out the big words there, basically, you can actually train that synthetic model and generalize on the actual construction site before it's even there and when when you think about the actual concept of that that's kind of mind-blowing it's like oh look there's the construction site ready to go even before it's there you know and this goes back to what james was saying about you know unreal engine and so on when all this technology converges in a way that it all sits nicely together and plays nicely together we're going to be in a position where we we can actually just say there's the construction site ready to go from day one and that that for me is just it's the stuff that i used to read about in sci-fi books <laughs> and it it just I, this is why i just love being involved in this industry because i'm starting to see things happening now that are if they're used in the right way obviously you know we we don't want anybody doing bad things with this stuff but if they're used in the right way, it's going to make for a world whereby we can do what Amy Marks wants, where we can be so sustainable, so climate conscious, and so on, because we're taking all of that rework. I mean, that statistic that Amy came out with when we had her on the podcast, that 60% of the world's waste is construction waste. It, it's a scary statistic. Yeah. And if we can just reduce that by 20, 30 percent, it, it's going to make a difference. We're, we're never, I don't think we'll ever get down to zero on that. We'll never be completely, you know, what I call carbon neutral zero or whatever. But if we can start utilizing this tech to take out all of that rework, all of those variation orders and everything else, it's going to make a massive difference. And that, that's where I, I looked at James's stuff and I was like, this is just going to make the construction arena a better place. It really is. 
and that, that's what I love about it. I'm surprised, and we've now been talking for 46 minutes, there are two th two topics we haven't talked about, which are my favourite topics, like carb or decarbonisation. Well, we better get in there. <laughs> can, we, can we do that quickly now, right? So decarbonisation and yep. artificial intelligence. So, uh, and they're, they're kind of, they're, they, yeah, they're, there's, there's subject matter in between the two, but let's hit them. Let's, so rework and decarbonisation is a big thing, and we're pouring... One million cube of concrete onto the earth every two hours. So you, you hit some facts like that, and it's pretty much one ton of emissions per ton of carbon. So the construction industry is responsible for 12% of all emissions. And that's not the 28% for operational. It's a subject that we need to do something about. I don't know what to do with that with a short kind of answer, but the we as contractors and designers and owners can do something about it. And it's low hanging fruit. And we can we can reimagine how we go about building things. And I don't know if there's anything else to say about that, but it's it's a trend that's going to come into the construction industry, and we're all going to be responsible for it. We're responsible for it now. So Great. I'm trying to hit that. Uh, the AI piece, like generative design, is maturing. Generative planning is kind of starting. So to be able to give uh, uh, ingredients and recipes to a project, you know, you've got 64 floors. Uh, we're probably going to go with the concrete core. We might go to the steel frame. Here's some ingredients for that. You know, you have to, there's some linear ingredients. Like, okay, I'm not going to build the 36th floor before I've built the 30, let me get this right, you know, 35th, right? There's a, there's dependencies that you can feed into, um, like not, not, not so much LLMs, but that's kind of interesting what LLMs are going to do for planning. Um, but generative planning with LLMs is an interesting space, and that's gonna, yeah. So there's there's some big topics there. We, it's amazing we haven't talked about them. I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's an interesting uh, construction technology. Feels like Sean to your point here. Yeah, it's gonna take off again, even more than it has done. This is there's there's there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff coming in. And I would imagine AI is something as well. I mean, Jim has commented on AI on LinkedIn, as have I a little bit as well. Um, AI is something that I, I look at it and I think a lot of people are, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of negativity about it right now. And I can understand that. You know, it's, it's, it's quite a, a scary looking thing at the moment. But it's more, you've got to look at it in, in two ways. You've, you've got a choice with AI. You can either just go with what it says or you can utilize what it says. So when I first got onto chat GBT, GBT, GPT, that's better. Um, I, I literally just typed in, how do you draw a polyline in AutoCAD? I thought, Let, let's do something really basic. And it gave me a beautiful workflow, but some of the terminology, some of the kind of, you know, sentencing and wordage was, was out of whack. And it would need to be addressed because it did not give a true workflow of generating a polyline in AutoCAD. Yeah. But if we can utilize AI to, again to take the technology away yeah. so that we're kind of saying, oh, look, you know, AI's generated this. We need to take that core content, check it all, revise it all, and create our model from it, so to speak. That's where it becomes useful. Because again, it's taking away the time. It's taking away potentially the waste when we talk about decarbonization. They, yeah. they do tie together. And, and that's where I can see AI being incredibly useful. Saying that though, you know, <laughs> there is that, like, oh, but is AI going to take my job away? We thought about that with robots about five, six, seven years ago. I remember Andrew Anagnos of Autodesk standing up on the keynote AU just saying, you know, robots are not going to take your jobs away. We still need people to program the robots. We still need people to build the robots. We still, you know, it, it we, we just need to adapt. And there's a lot of scaremongering out there in the industry. And I, I, I don't think we need to worry. I don't think we need to be scared. We need to adapt and learn. I think what we'll see is we're getting used to using these tools in our personal lives. And, and for a lot of us, and we are using these tools in our personal lives anyway, because they're, they're at the, 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 the center of Facebook and LinkedIn and others. So we're, they're already there if we don't see it. The technology is not there, but we're going to 
we're going to have more, we're all going to have a personal assistant, right, pretty soon. And we use Grammarly, right, so that we're using these tools, we're going to get used to that, and then we're going to go to our project, our professional lives, and we're going to want the same tools, like we wanted the internet, we wanted mobile phones, we wanted laptops, obviously, because we're used to using a mobile phone. I, re I remember the pain of trying to get my first mobile phone on site. And it was like, well, I'm, I've got one in my personal lives. I need one because it changes my behavior. It changes the way I work. So AI is going to come into our industry one way or another. There'll be early adopters. There'll be spikes, in it, and there already are. Um, it's then it's it's at all of us. We're going to get used to it, and we'll just say, hey, we we need a co-pilot for the project. We need that seventh member of the team who we can just ask and query, like exactly. what is the contract, yeah. what are the specifications. You've read them, you've eaten them, you've trained on them. And now, kind of give us something back, and so yeah, yeah. So that, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. And it'll be like I, I, one of the things that it kind of struck me as, and this is a bit of a, a slight sort of it's a bit of a daft analogy, but it it's like Jarvis in Iron Man's suit. That's where AI is going to go. That, that's that's where it's going to go. We're not going to have an Iron Man suit on and we're not going to talk to Jarvis, but like you said, a personal assistant. And you are literally going to be able to like, you know, jump in your car and go, can you read me today's emails? Why, that, why that's not, where it's going to go. Why no Iron Man suit? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd love one. I'd, okay. Yeah, I'd, 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 I wouldn't fit in the real one because I'm built like a hobbit. <laughs> You, my Iron Man suit might look a little different than Iron Man's. Yeah, right? mine would be a bit stumpy and short. <laughs> Have you but, seen the, uh, but James, the I love that. There. The technology is there. It, it's beginning to happen. And I, I totally concur with how James is, is thinking here, having that you know extra person on the team well, that and, you and, refer yeah. back to. I agree, and I, I I love the conversation, and I, I I love it when we you know bring in other other people like James, you know who who like throw out stuff I've never thought of. I mean, James, you said something just really briefly and really quickly and simply that uh, that actually might I, I'm going to go try this out now, right? Because it might be brilliant if I can if I can train an AI really quickly on the project specifications, right? Which, which are a printed document, like two inches yep. thick that, that we're all supposed to have read and, and nobody does. But if I can make the AI read those specs and then I can feed in all the notes from the drawings, mm. I, I, I can probably go on there right now and say, you know, hey, um, are there any conflicts between what the drawings are telling me to do and the specifications are telling me to do? Because that's a that's a common. I mean, that's just a talk about well hanging fruit, right? I mean, talk, and, you know, that's something that constantly causes rework, right? I followed the plans. Well, you were you were supposed to follow the specs. Which one should you know? Oh, we got to send an RFI in. That talk about low hanging fruit that AI might be able to solve. Yeah, that's brilliant. Absolutely. So now, now, now we need three to four hours because we can we can unbox that and and think about what happens next. So let's say you have a co-pilot that sits on eight thousand projects, and you've got the eight thousand and one project. You've got that next project. What's it going to do? It's going to give you a pretty reasonable estimate. It's going to it's going to mean average a whole load of stuff. And it's going to give you an estimate for that 120 meter span bridge and it's going to give you a time estimate and it's going to start throwing something else out so so we're going to we're going to create something that's the next generation the first generation will be assistant it will consume the contract and be able to give you that contract. and you what AR is what, what llms are very good at is zooming in and zooming out so you can you can take an exact view of your 84 projects you're a general contract you got 84 live projects i i want to i want to zoom out I want a Friday afternoon exact level summary of how our projects are doing, because I'm recording all the meetings, of course. So, I, but I, I want the zoomed out view. And now you run through that exact level, and then you zoom in on something. So you say, oh, there's a red flag here, and I don't like the feel of that project. Like we do, we do that manually, right? But there's there's layers of management and transparency there. Whereas an AI is 24 hours, it's on every project, and can summarize and can zoom in. So when you zoom in, then you it's giving it's like it's maybe the promise of information management is going to it's going to really come through and it's going to happen in the next five ten years and sean absolutely this is not taking our jobs this is allowing us all to get a lot better at those jobs exactly it's, exactly yeah. people that are i mean i i love new tech i mean without going on too much i got a new bmw i4 a couple of weeks ago i thought we were going to 
No, no, no. You told me not to mention that. Talk about the good bits. Tell me not. Okay, I, all right. I had an issue with some of the bodywork. Don't worry about it. Um, but but I jump into that, and and that's crazy because it's got a pro my my profile programmed to the key. So as soon as I jump in, everything is preset. You know, my seat position, my mirrors position, and it's the first car that I've ever had that does that. And it's it's one of those things where I I can literally just go, hey BMW and what a route to such and such making sure i've got charging points along the way and mm. it we're, we're starting to get that technology and um, tesla have done it as well you know they've got lots of super cool stuff going on i mean i was driving the bmw the other other day with assisted driving and it just quite happily steers for me and that completely threw me because it was the first time i'd experienced it in the car so sean just to jump in there okay imagine that what's the the construction project version of that is you're a quantity surveyor and you've already asked those questions and Jim, like, it knows, it, there's memory yeah. to these things, right? There's, it doesn't start fresh, it's not Google search, so it's not starting fresh every time. So it knows that <clears throat> like you've got, you've been querying the spec of the facade, you've been having conversations with the facade contractor and maybe the architect's kind of like, uh, hasn't been updated. So that, that kind of assist part, which is Sean, your kind of personalized view, you will have that seventh member of the team is a personalized view for you mm -hmm. and it has memory so that's like the power like the, it's just it's, it's incredibly it's, powerful it's quite interesting yeah and that let the llms are they're a lot to train but but you could build these things so don't be surprised that this is coming soon you'll have your the project ai called jarvis sean I, I would like it to be called Jarvis. That would be nice. We, we can do that. We'll do. We'll do that. Yeah. I, 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 I never did find. I, I always wanted to have um, my all of my little email notifications on my phone and stuff using Jarvis's voice, but I couldn't find one anywhere because they're all copyrighted and locked down by Marvel, so you couldn't get hold of them, um, which would have been fun. But no, I'm, I'm totally with you on that technology though, because like you say, it's not a one-off. It's not like you jump on Google and it's just static and it's a piece of information. The yeah. AI is going to take that piece of information and extrapolate it and do all the what if and the whys and the wherefores for you so that the next bit of information you get, it's learned from all of that and it's gone, oh, you need to do this now. And this and, is and the maybe, better way of doing it. And maybe, maybe puts a flag up and says, hey, the, you know, the, there was this, uh, we're going to have meetings that are recorded. We're going to have ones that are not recorded. This can be quite binary. And, and the ones that are recorded, they'll be like, hey, Sean, I know you're interested in the facade system. Uh, this team here were talking about it. And this was the result. So that zoom in, zoom out again. Yeah. So you, it, it's giving you that little, you know, you get in the morning. It's like, hey, Jarvis, what, what do I need to look out for, for today? Not much, but they were talking about the facade system yesterday. You might want to give Simon and Emma a call. And yeah. that, that, like we... You will have that in our personal lives, and we're going to be what we're going to be expecting it in our professional lives. So it's going to come in. It is going to. It, it, it is absolutely. There's there's no doubt about it. Um, Adams popped another one in there as well, um, where LLMs can be powerful is when we use yeah. purposeful. Yeah. yeah, purposeful data sets. Absolutely. Yeah. So you, you you train it on the project archive, and then you've got results that are in sync with that current project. So like you say, you've done 80 projects. There might be areas of, oh, I, I don't want to kind of throw aspersions, but areas of error that potentially caused rework, costing, implications, etc. The artificial intelligence is going to go, hang on a minute, that cost more money last time. Let's look at how we can change that and make it better. And whereas, obviously, if you went back to just a summary of a previous project, You've got to go and read all of that information about that project to find out where those errors and rework were to learn from them. The AI is going to learn from them and going to take you in a direction that potentially is going to be better. I like it. Well, we, gentlemen, we are like right at time. Um, but yeah. James, do, do we, uh, you have any, any final parting words that you want to share with us? Just happy to finish on time because uh, we work with a lot of planners. So yeah, it's good. It's good to finish on time. Yeah, there's a, there's a yeah. really bad joke to finish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we we really we really appreciate you uh, joining us today. 
Um, I really appreciate all the comments and questions that are in the chat. And then James, you know, those, if you go on this event and, and for any of you watching on any other platform, if you go on this event page on LinkedIn, all of these questions and comments stay there. Sean and I usually pr try and pop in and see if there's anything that maybe went unanswered and, and add some comments uh, there. So uh, James, we invite you to do the same thing. Um, again, really, really appreciate you uh, joining us. Um, I've got some great ideas after after this one, so I'm yeah, really excited yeah, about that. I've, I've and, had a few now. So. Yeah, and we'll uh, we will we will definitely keep in touch. Um, Sean and I will be back again next month. We should be on our, our regularly monthly schedule here. Um, next month, Sean, maybe we'll talk about some new courses coming out as well as yeah, as well yeah. As I've got a few coming through, uh, so there's there's that happening as well. So. And, uh, yeah, we, we should also have, I, fingers crossed, um, I'm expecting an email for the guest in July, which is uh, a bit of a project after my own heart, which is all about reality capture. So nice. All right. So look, look for that soon. And um, again, everybody, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we'll see you next time on Beams and Columns. Thanks. Cheers, James. Take care. Thanks, thanks very much, guys. Really enjoyed it.